Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Lapfix. Back at it again, we got another video for you guys today. Today we have this nice, it's a Western Digital Elements. It's a USB um, external drive here. Uh, I'd probably get one of these big old boxes too. Man, even the customer brought in a big old box for this. And it's a three terabyte drive that we have here. It's for data recovery. And obviously it's a really nice drive. Um, it's, it's very convenient for people maybe, it's not really super on the go. They even show it as right next to like a desktop or something, but it's nice to have all your data really on one drive. Um, but there's a problem with it and we need to see what's going on. The, the customer can't access their data. So what happened there? Who knows? But we're gonna experience that today, right? We're gonna be seeing what's going on, see if we can get the data. So we have one of these drives. Now inside one of these drives, I actually did take it out um, before we even really go crazy with it, right? Um, you always want to take it out of one of these because inside one of these little compartments is usually right. It's not just a, a separate um, USB drive that's in there. Um, I showed another video just removing it, doing it that way, if, especially if that's an easy problem. You go ahead, check that one out. That's more of an easier repair, more of a basic thing. The best case scenario for something like that, it's very lucky, especially because there is a separate PCB board in there um, that connects, right? So inside one of these, when you take it up, you actually see this. And this is where I showed in the other video is that there is a separate PCB board USB connection board, right? It's a connection. It's just a, like a pretty much like a dongle or an adapter. And it's to connect for USB, right? And there's a power, um, there's USB. And sometimes this can fail. It's very common for it to fail too, especially if it's, um, who knows? Because right, there's a whole board on here. There's, it's doing lots of things, right? So there's, you know, capacitors, there's power flow, there's data, there's lots of stuff going on there. They can fail. So you want to try to go ahead and remove that first. That's the most important thing because you want to work your way from the easy way to the hard way, right? And now we're here and we have this one of these drives. It's a three and a half inch drive that's in there that's connected to this. And we want to see what's going on. They're normally formatted as more of like an XFAT drive, which is going to help for compatibility for Windows and Mac. Uh, we're going to go ahead and see. So let's see what the symptoms are when we plug it in. We do have like an external sled here. Let's just see the symptoms of it, see what's going on, uh, see what we got here. So I do turn it on. I'm just going to plug it in my Windows machine just to see if there's any symptoms or see if it turns on. What's going on in there? So I can feel it spinning. Okay, we heard the Windows, um, if Windows Explorer noticed it, right? So it must be good, right? All right, that's why they're here. But let's go ahead, <laughs> let's go ahead and see. So I'm gonna bring up this right, screen cap. Uh, we don't really see anything here, right? We just see, these are our normal drives, there's nothing there. But we can go ahead and at least check um, disk management because, yeah, let's go ahead and check uh, disk management. And we bring this up here and we actually don't see really anything, right? There's nothing there whatsoever. We need to cancel this because I don't. I think I already had it open. Sometimes you need to refresh it. Sometimes it might actually show something, right? So if I connect here, nope, nothing. So just our basic drives here. We have normal ones. Okay, so we did try on our Mac and we got the same thing. How it didn't actually come up whatsoever. Um, so it looks like that there's a problem with identifying the drive itself there, right? No, for software it's not going to work. So we need to do some some hardware work on it, right? The next thing we want to do is we want to take a look at the drive. And on the drive, right, you see something else there. There's a PCB. And man, we love motherboard repairs. We like doing any type of work with a PCB. Um, so let's go ahead and maybe that's the problem there, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at that first. Okay, so it's really easy. We can lift this up. There's a separate board there. There's also other connections there. Sometimes if they're damaged or something, or uh, the, the pad's actually really good. This is a little bit of a foam pad. It's really good because if you see there's like an obvious burn on there, you would obviously see it from there. Uh, this looks like to be pretty clean, um, but here we go. So this is what a PCB is. We can see that. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at it under the microscope to see if there's any obvious damage, anything that that's really just stands out. All right, so we have this under the microscope. And the first area we want to check is because um, the first area we want to check, right, is the power in area because this is where it is, right? So there's a SATA connection here. We got power and data line, and that's where it's coming in from, right? So sometimes if it's coming in there, it's starting there. Maybe there's a fault there or fault for some type of fault for recognition there, right? Maybe there's a blown capacitor. Or maybe some of the pins can get damaged. It's really easy for that to happen. Um, and we don't know exactly, right? You always like to ask questions for the client to see exactly what happened there, if it's a physical drop or something to make it a little bit more obvious or, or that. But we're looking here, the pins look to be actually okay. Um, yeah, don't really see anything super obvious there. Let's go ahead and check, Let's just do a quick scan. Sometimes you can see this, this is another connection. Um, and these actually do connect to the drive itself, these little bit of pads here. And sometimes these can actually get a little bit damaged or something. and 
or just a little bit dirty or something like that, right? So what you can do is actually if you have like an eraser or something, you can actually have, have that handy um, and you can actually sometimes just change this little bit of a color here, right? Because sometimes it can get a little bit discolored um, and it's not going to read properly, right? Because these need to be all at least very good to read. Um, nothing looks to be uh, ridiculous here, but sometimes just doing this can help a little bit more. Let's see if we do it on the edge one here, right? You see how it's lightened up a little bit? There's only so much this can do, but it's usually more for if there's like, um, if it's very obvious like the connection. The one in the corner looks to be a little bit bad, but that's probably okay because you can see the main uh, little pin in the middle there on the t on that top left one. You can see it that actually is making contact and looked like it was making contact fine. We go ahead, look around, scan the board. See if there's anything out of place. Damage capacitors, something blown, liquid spill, something, right? And it doesn't really seem to be a case. All these pins actually look to be okay here. Okay, so this actually looks to be good. So since we didn't see any obvious damage, and again, uh, we didn't hear any click noises or anything else going that way, we're going to still blame this to be the problem, right? Maybe there's a problem with it recognizing there. Um, maybe there's... Oh, something corrupted there. Who really knows? Maybe there's damage to it there. Um, you can measure it. We can obviously do that as well. Or we can show you guys some fun stuff because we are also Data Recovery Center. We also have like donor drives and part of these donor drives, sometimes they're going to be a little bit different, but maybe the drive might be a little bit different, but sometimes the PCB can actually be the same. So we do have this PCB here. It looks very identical to our other one, right? So we see it here almost to the same exact thing, even though it's a completely different drive whatsoever. I think that one's like a NAS drive too, but it looks to be the same on both sides. Uh, it's really important to, to try to match these up always the best you can, especially for certain ones. A lot of a lot of times Western Digital, especially the newer ones, Western Digital could be encrypted, so there might be like some type of MCU encryption, which makes doing work on it all the more fun, let's say for you guys. <laughs> so um, for this one, it's a little bit of an older one. It looks like, I think this drive was from 2014, but it's a three terabyte drive. Um, so what we can probably do is we just want to test the theory of it because we know this is a working drive that we have here. What, what if we can just say, hey, you know what? We think the drive is physically good, but there might be a problem with this board here. And there's no obvious damage, nothing there. But what we can do is we can just swap them, right? So if we swap them, then what? It should just work, right? Right out of the box, just swap them. No, it's not going to work that way because if we work that way, what you will probably do is you'll probably get power, you'll probably get recognition there, but how is the driver going to locate the data? Um, and it does that through something called a BIOS chip and it's going to help locate the actual uh, data on the drive here. So let's go under the microscope. We'll actually show you that. It's a little chip that's on the bottom. Oh, that's a good one. It's right next to where the connection is over here. So this chip here. And let's just, oh, we need to replace them. We need to swap them because that's the whole point, right? So let's go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and then try it out and see if it's going to work. So we want to be careful removing it. It's very delicate. So we're going to loosen it up first. True, right? Okay, there we go. So we replaced the BIOS chip there. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and see if the behavior changes in any way. All right, because we're expecting to now. Um, uh, 
because we believe there is a problem more with uh, the board itself. And just doing this simple swap on there, sh hopefully should be good enough. So let's plug this back in, just put the screws back on. So our drive looks to be good. And let's go ahead and plug in a PC3000 and see what happens now. We're gonna bring up our PC3000 software. We can go ahead and activate the utility there. And we see we're getting our drive information, which is really good. We're gonna do a little bit of work on it and then we can actually go to data extractor here. And we actually see that there is partitions. And if we go down here, we see it's XFAC drive. And here's the data. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on doing the data recovery for this Western Digital Elements 3.5 inch drive. If you did, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. We do lots of data recoveries. We do liquid spill repairs, bore level repairs, PCB repairs, you name it. So, hope you guys are watching. Take care. Bye.